All right, good afternoon. My name is Chris Strauss-Dowski. I work for Origin Lab in the Technical Support Department. I'll be hosting this afternoon's webinar, uh, What's New in Origin 2020B? Before we get started with the webinar, I just want to make some announcements. First, we, uh, we had to mute the audience because there are so many people participating. It could be problematic if people could speak second. Uh, we're not going to be able to respond to hand raising. Instead, I'd ask that you uh, ask your questions in the Q&A panel. I have a colleague here who can help you answer those questions. Uh, also, at, uh, in the next couple days, uh, maybe uh, maybe by Monday, we will make a recording of this webinar available and probably the project file available, and we'll send you an email with that notice. Also, we're going to be doing a, a brief follow-up survey at that time, and I'd, we'd like to ask you to please take the time to fill out that survey that the information you give us and your input is very important to us. Customer input drives the, the development of origin. We get many, if not, mo well, we get many, if not most of our features from customer requests. So what you say to us does matter. Also, before I start the webinar, I'd like to point out our, our social networking options we have. We have a Facebook presence and a LinkedIn presence. You can search for Origin Lab on both platforms to find us. We have a blog. Uh, it's at blog.originlab.com. It's a great place to learn more about our product. We tend to, around release time to, 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 to write a number of blog posts explaining how the new features work to get you up to speed. And between releases, we have blog posts where we, where we outline or, or illustrate how to create you know, various graphs that are unusual or perform analysis that are unusual. That's so a nice place to visit and, and learn more about our product. We also have a user forum that's been around for maybe 20 years. It's a wealth of information going back a long time. It's a good place to ask questions, particularly after hours. You'll get an answer generally from someone in Origin Lab, maybe not immediately, but you also sometimes get answers from other users. Next, we have apps. Apps are plugins for Origin. It's an architecture we developed a few versions ago. It used to be the case that when a customer wanted a new feature or we wanted a new feature at Origin Lab, we would have to wait for the next release of Origin to, to get this feature. But with apps now, we can, we can, at the request of customers or through our own initiative, we can create new features and put them in Origin in, in mid-release cycle. We put them on our, on our web, web, web server. We have a, a user interface in Origin for perusing and downloading and installing apps. So we encourage you to learn more about apps. I'll try to show you some of the new apps in Origin 2020B today if I have time. Finally, we have our YouTube channel. You can search it. You can search for Origin Lab. Our YouTube channel is a great way to learn about our product. If you really want to learn how to use Origin, watching our videos is perhaps the best way. In fact, one of our, our uh, playlists is as a tips and tricks, a short video playlist. They're little one minute or less than two minute videos that highlight some aspect of using Origin. You can learn a, an awful lot watching some of those videos. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started with our webinar. Let me close this. Okay, our webinar today is What's New in Origin 2020B, an introduction to new features in 2020B, and uh, some features that we've improved from recent versions. So it's not all just 2020B features. And let's take a look at our Project Explorer. Some areas we're going to cover, we, we're going to look at some more uh, Additions to our graphing mini toolbars. Mini toolbars were a feature we introduced in Origin 2020. We think they're very popular. They allow you to, to edit aspects of a graph in, in place right there on the graph without having to open three or four different dialogues and clicking a bunch of buttons. They're little toolbars that pop up and they have the right context for, for what you need to do. And we've made improvements in the graphing area for 2020B. Also for 2020B, we've, we've ported many toolbars over to work at, at the workbook worksheet level and the matrix sheet, the matrix, the column level. So they now work on our data containers and not just our graphs. 
We have a new graph type. It's called a browser graph. It's really geared towards people that have a large number of similar data sets. They want to do a visual comparison, a visual in inspection of these data sets. We made improvements in data connectors. Data connectors are a new way of importing data into Origin. We introduced them in Origin 2019B. We made some improvements in that area, and I'll highlight some of those. Finally, I'll, I'm going I'm to go over our, our HTML features. We, we've, we've improved them a little bit in 2020B. They're a carryover from earlier versions, but they're really worth looking at, so I'm introducing to the, them to you again. Finally, I'm going to just I'm just going to give examples of the number of new graph types we have in 2020B. And lastly, if I have time, I'll show you how you can look at and download the new apps for 2020B. So let's get started and look at these new, uh, these graph mini toolbar improvements. All right, I don't know uh, how many of you currently have Origin 2020 and are using mini toolbars? But like I said, the idea of the mini toolbar is it's a pop-up toolbar that lets you edit some aspect of the graph directly on the graph. And so I have a, a, a rather vanilla looking line plot here. It's just a Gaussian peak. And for example, what the mini toolbar does, is I can come in and click on this plot. And you can see the mini toolbar pops up. I can change the line thickness on it up and down. I can change the color of it. I can add labels if I wanted. I'm not going to in this case. Other options, I can edit the data range of what I want to display. I can even through the mini toolbar change the plot type. Maybe I want to change this to a scatter plot. And I'll change it back to a line plot so I can make a point here. Many options, yes, well, while well, I'm here, let me show you the scatter plot. We can change the symbol size. We can change the symbol shape. I tend to prefer the diamond myself. And we can change maybe to have a, a light fill and maybe a dark border. So we have options. These mini toolbars are very useful. But let's look at the particular feature I'm talking about. And that is to add a new plot to the mini toolbar. So I'm going to come in. Not only do we have a mini toolbar, at the plot level here, we have one at the layer level. So I'm going to click out in this white layer area and I get a mini toolbar over to the side. And on that toolbar, I can add a new plot. Maybe I want to add a line plot and uh, it will choose a selection from the worksheet. And let's come down and we're going to add another plot and choose OK. And Origin is going to want to rescale it, but we can see the mini toolbar let us add a plot that easily. Let's look at some other options with our improved mini toolbars for graphs. We can change plot types. In fact, I just showed you that. I've got a, I've got a, a two-layer two plot here, a double-y-axis double plot, and I want to change this blue plot to be a column plot. So I'm just going to click on it. And from my mini toolbar, I can come over, see I have very, so options, line, color, line, thicknesses. This is copying plot. You, this is useful, actually. I'm going to stop and tell you this, because I can copy this plot to the, to the clipboard and go over to another graph and paste that plot on it. So that's a neat mini toolbar feature there. It's, it's, it's an ease of use feature. But I can come over to my button here to change the plot, and I'm going to change it to a column, bar plot. And when I do, I change the nature of the graph. It's, it's, it, it's, it's a quick way to do that. So that's another mini toolbar option for graphs. And let's look at another one. Let's look, axis breaks get, get some, some much deserved attention with mini toolbars. I can come in somewhere and click on an axis break or out in, the, out in the layer area even in the line of the axis break and highlight it. And I get a mini toolbar with options. Maybe I want to make my, the length of the breaks longer or shorter. Maybe I want to make the gap between in the break wider. I can do that or smaller. This is pretty nifty. Right from the mini toolbar, I can change the type. What the, I can change what the symbol for the break looks like. 
I have a number of options there. Other options include connecting the line across the brake. Some people want this. It looks a little strange, but customers have requested that. This is to keep a trend line. That doesn't really apply always. We can use a proportional unit. This this sets the, the brake. This, it's hard to, a little bit hard to explain how it works, but it sets a proportion. Then we can specify the brake symbol show on the on the line plot and not just on on the axis finally we have an option for a border on the brake so that's uh, that is the axis brake mini toolbar it really makes uh customizing axis brakes a lot easier than it used to be and let's look at some more mini toolbar options reference lines reference lines are a feature we introduced a few versions of origin ago few versions ago. They are in the Axis dialog. Let me show you how you get there normally. So we'll double click up. Oh, you can see the mini toolbar associated with an Axis, but let me open the Axis dialog. And by the way, if you notice a little bit of slowness today, you're going to have to bear with me. I'm working from home and I'm using, unfortunately, a fairly underpowered laptop. So we may not get the performance that we're, that we're typically used to with a good quality workstation. I apologize in advance for that. Anyway, we have the Axis dialog, and our reference lines are over <clears throat> in a tab, and we have to go in and we can add them, but then we have to go in and add and go into the details to do very fancy things with reference lines. That's the way it used to be. Now we can do, now we, we have access to some quick, commonly used reference lines. Like we have a signal here. Maybe we want to add some statistical reference lines to this graph. So I will click on the plot, on the layer to open the layer mini toolbar. And besides adding plots and showing and hiding plots, we have a number of choices here. We can add statistical reference lines. We have options. We have a mean, a median, median, mean plus standard deviation. Let's add that. So we get that. We can get the mean minus standard deviation. We can get the mean. We can come in and add the min and the max. Let me see where minimum, maximum. So we, we, we have quick access to these commonly used reference lines because these are probably the number one type of reference lines customers use. And so it's so much quicker now with, with uh, the mini toolbar. Let's look at some other options for mini toolbars. Legend wrapping. Wrapping of legends has been a thing that's been requested by customers for many ver versions and we've improved support for it in, in Origin 2020B. And this is how we're going to do it. We have a graph right now. If we try to rat, if we try to shrink the width of it, it just makes the legend smaller. It doesn't really give us the wrapping we may expect. But if we click on the legend, we get a mini toolbar. Among other things, like we can, the fact that we can change the legend to a different font and a different font size. We have many other options here, including uh, changing font color, bold, rotating it, rotating it. So, but here's what I was going to come. This is my main point. We have a legend wrap. So if I enable it, certain buttons in a mini toolbar, you'll see a little red checkbox. That means that functionality is enabled. So if I enable it now, when I decrease the size of the legend, it's wrapping the text instead of just shrinking everything. That is a, the, the wrapping of the text is, is a, like I said, it's a feature that a lot of people have made and not only do we support it now, we made it easy to do via the mini toolbar. While I'm here, let me show you another feature of our mini toolbars we improved in Origin 2020. If I open a mini toolbar, let me reselect the legend. You will observe in our, in our new mini toolbars, there is a bar at the bottom with three dots. If I click on that bar, I can actually customize what I want to show. Maybe, and I, maybe I want to get rid of the rotation because I'm never going to rotate my legend. Maybe I want to get rid of, 
I don't know the bold. I don't know if I would do that myself, but that's an option. And I can say, okay. And they'll remove it to come back. I can hold down. I can come back and click on the bar again and just bring them back. So you can customize your mini toolbars in Origin 2020. Some of them have a fair number of buttons on it and things you never use. You just hide them if you want to. Let's look at more mini toolbar options. Now we now have an option, and this has been in Origin for a few versions, where we can fit uh, our graph page. And the graph page in Origin is that white area. It's that background white area. We use that term page, like a like a page in a book. I guess it's just because of the because it's white and looks like a page in a book. And we can select the page level mini toolbar, and that becomes accessible by moving our mouse cursor sort of to the edge of the, to the right to the edge of the page. And among, up, lost it. And among the options there, we do have the ability to show and hide layer icons. A lot of people like to hide them. We can actually show access icons too. That's actually, that's useful if you're doing customizations in like the access dialog and you're not sure which access applies to which layer. We have grids. I won't turn them on. We have uh, dense data mode. That's not really, that's more applicable to graphs that, that, that have many, 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 many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of data points. So we don't worry about that. Here's the one we're going to look at, fit page to layers. If I click this, a dialog pops up. And what it does is it is going to shrink that page to fit the layout of the layers. And I can specify a border width and percent. Maybe I just want a 3% border. And I can adjust, you know, the direction, height and width, height or width only. And I'll say, okay. And Origin is going to adjust that. I think earlier I'd done some testing and I had fiddled with it. That's why it looked like the layers shrank. Whoops, wrong thing. That's why it looks like the layer shrank rather than the page. I just wanted to make sure on that. So those are some of the areas of the mini toolbars on the graphs that we improved. If you had, like I say, if you, if you haven't been using 2020, then I, I would really encourage, and well, if you do use 2020, I'd encourage you to upgrade because they really, you, once you get used to using a mini toolbars, you don't want to go back to using the dialogues unless you have to. All right, let's take a look at some other ones. We're going to look at the last option. And this is a, this is an area that this is a feature that's been in origin for a long time. And we've improved it some in recent versions. By default, when you make a graph in origin, it is in what's called page view mode. The, the proportion of the page size, the layer size is fixed. When you resize the window, it's still fixed. Those, those ratios and proportions, the graph just gets bigger and smaller. But if we come in using our page level mini toolbar, let's see, we can come to this button, which calls window view. Window view is a different way to view a graph. In window view, when you resize the graph window, the graph stretches out and shrinks. It resizes itself. For some things, it's very useful. For others, not so useful. Some people like it and some don't, but the option is there, and it's now easy to turn on and off from the mini toolbar. And it'll, this will take us right back to our original proportions. All right, so that's it for our, our improved uh, graph level mini toolbars. So maybe there are a few more features that I missed, uh, but that'll be okay. Let's move on and look at our worksheet and matrix mini toolbars now. All right, let's start at our column level. We'll we'll bring in a, a worksheet here, and let's take let's put let's just choose a, an arbitrary column. I select the column and I get a mini toolbar. I can hide the column, resize it. We don't need to. Let's see what happens when we make it wider manually and resize it. I can resize it to fit the contents. I can sort the worksheet, not the column, the whole worksheet by this column. I can search for a value in the column. Let's say we find, look for 12. 
and it'll take me through to find the values. We can add our spark lines if we want. We can set the column as categorical. For example, maybe our make column, our automotive make column, we want to set that as categorical. We can set a sampling interval. It wouldn't be relevant to this, this column, but some data, it's some data and some customers who requested to have the ability to set a sampling interval easily. We can copy for plotting. This is neat. I told you about how you could you could copy a plot from one graph to another. This way you can copy the column data onto the clipboard and paste it into a graph and make it and make a a new plot that way. Delete the column. I won't do that. Insert a new column. Let's res we can set our X, well, we can set our X, Y, Z error bars, that sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and choose some, choose a couple columns here and hide them. The reason being I can show, it'll be a feature I will show you later. So let me hide those columns. Now let's look at, actually, I'll go ahead while I'm here. I might as well do it. So I've hidden some columns. Let me show you how I can unhide them. I will just come out here. We have a worksheet level mini toolbar too. It's accessible either out in this gray area to the right of origin, I mean, of the columns, or more easily, it's accessible in this top left corner. We just have to move our mouse a little carefully till you get used to it. Do we see the icon change to looking like a little bit of a, like a little toolbar? And I'll click on there, and now I can bring back the hidden columns through the sheet mini toolbar. We have other options here. I will go through them. Uh, there's a couple I'll go through later, but one option is to do, is to change the column list view. Column list view is a different way of looking at, at worksheets that we introduced a couple versions ago. Column list view isn't so useful in this case, but it's useful if you have dozens or even hundreds or more of columns and you don't want to scroll all the way right and all the way left. Column list view instead makes the, makes each column into a row and it just shows you the, the label rows and the metadata and you can hover and you can hover to see the first few values. That's column list view. So let's get back out of that with the mini toolbar. And we'll come over, uncheck that. Some other options include clearing the worksheet. And let's look at some other options here. Adding a new column. We also have many of the mini toolbars will have, have these little gear buttons. Those are for opening, those are for opening various dialogues in whatever context applies to that mini toolbar. For example, from here I can open the sheet properties or the book properties dialog. So that's a column and then somewhat of a, the sheet level mini toolbars. Let's look at cell formulas how easy it is to work with cell formulas. We added cell formulas to Origin a few versions ago and it's, a con and it's, a, it's been improving. One of the difficulties is seeing the cell formulas. You can double click in the, in the cell itself to see the formula. That's a, that's a little bit, it's a little bit inconvenient and it's also hard to see in a worksheet where all the cell formulas are. So we added a button to our mini toolbar at the worksheet level, so I'm going to come over here to, and trigger it. And it's, whoops, and trigger it. It's right here. It shows a, shows a 15 over f of x show formula. And when I do that, all the formulas in the worksheet become visible. And I can then add a formula. I'm just going to copy and paste it into a cell here. And now I can go back to my worksheet level mini toolbar. Doesn't like me today. And I can turn off that show formulas. And now I see our, my calculation, my cell level calculation. Let's keep looking at some more features. All right, the sheet level, we covered most of the sheet level. Let me just look at a couple more things here. We, we do have the ability at the sheet level to show 
the organizer. This isn't done very much, but the organizer is a way to view metadata about, say, an imported file because import information gets stored inside a workbook and inside a worksheet, and this gives us access to that. So that's, that's an area of the worksheet level. Let me go ahead and hide that now. That, that's just one more worksheet level mini toolbar button. Finally, let's just take a quick look at what, uh, our matrix mini toolbar. It does not have sheet levels. It, it's, it's, a, it's a simpler toolbar for working with matri matrices. It's triggered in the upper left corner. We have options. We can show X, Y if we need to. We can convert to, to view the data as an image. Even in the image, if you go to that same area, it's hard to make out. There is a mini toolbar trigger. I can go to what's called an image selector. That lets us see all the, actually all the matrices in this worksheet. I can choose to use a, a, a slider. This is another way to view the matrices in a worksheet. We'll see an example. The slider slides through the, the, the stack of matrices and we'll see another example of this later when we talk about an HDF5 import. So let's see what else we have here. Let me get that, close this, come back to my mini toolbar. What other options? Oh. We have the organizer again. We can clear our data. We can copy for plotting again, copy the data, paste it into the appropriate graph. And of course we can open dialogues. So that's our, our matrix level mini toolbar. Now let's move on to a, another subject. Let's look at, this is a new feature in Origin 2020. It's called a browser graph. I introduced it as a way for people who have many of the same types of data sets to, uh, to view their data and can visually compare and contrast their data. I'll show you what one looks like in just a moment. I wonder, no, I'm sorry, this is the wrong category. Let me come down here to browser graph. All right. This is a browser graph that we are looking at in front of us. Let me get rid of the, the uh, and bear with me while Origin does an autosave. Uh, essentially, a browser graph consists of a graph panel on the right and like a control panel on the left. <clears throat> they can be resized as a splitter. And you can change the plots. This is a list of plots in the graph of data that's been plotted on the left and we can work our way through and look at the different plots. We can also hold down the shift key and select multiple plots and ranges of plots to look and see how, how our data may compare. For example, this, this sort of comparison is very popular with test and measurement in the test and measurement community. It can be popular. We get a lot of requests for features like this from the spectroscopy community. We have other options associated with this list. We, in the, in the, the header for our, our, our control panel here, we can right click and, sh and add more, add more, uh, more metadata to it. We don't have units, we do have comments, as well on these browser plots. And I'm gonna show you how to make one in just a minute. But as well, we have a drop down menu with various options to select all the plots or unselect them. We can select every fifth or every nth. For example, let's say we want to select something like every sixth plot. Origin will do that, or the browser graph will do that. We can set stack lines by a Y offset if we want to and unstack them. We can remove plots from the list if we want to, selected or unselected plots. And we have some other features for bringing in similar columns from other workbooks or other worksheets. So that's sort of the interface for the, for the basic browser graphs. So let me show you a little bit more about how to create them because we have three different kinds. I have a worksheet here. I'm not going to select anything. It's got a fairly large number of columns and I want to be able to browse all of these columns. So I'm not going to select anything. That's okay. 
I'll go to plot, browser, and I have a couple options. I have a black lines, a color lines, and a histogram. Let's start with a black lines browser graph. It's essentially like the one you just saw. Let me make it a little bit bigger to fit on my screen better. It's like the one you just saw, but rather than having the, co uh, the color map lines, all the plots are black. So that's one of our browser graph types. Let me find the other one. That's not it. All right, we're doing another background. All right, we're back at our, our oil samples data. You will observe that I have this data, this particular data is, is in the column list view. Let me do a quick use that mini toolbar to go ahead and switch that off so you can see. This is the original data. We'll go back to column list view just to show that our, our browser plot also works with a column list view. So this time we're gonna use, go to browser category, color lines. And again, let me make it a little smaller. The template this is based on was perhaps a little bit too big and that's okay. All right, the way this one works is, is there is a color map stretched throughout all of the plots. So our first plot, for example, this color map is like a purple and the last plot is 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 a uh, is a reddish. So what happens is if we select all the plots, we can we can see the the color change in the legend. We can see the range of colors is going from like a purple, through a blue, through a green, to a red. This is a, I think a colorblind palette. It's a, it's a colorblind color map plat palette. So those are those are the two of the browser plots. Now let's look at the last one the histogram browser plot. Pardon me for just a moment. All right, the histogram browser plot. Pardon me, wrong menu. All right, so we're gonna load up some, some categorical data. And this time, let's come in let me just bring my notes. I do keep some notes with me when I do webinars. Sometimes it's hard to remember everything I'm supposed to do or the exact sequence of things. So I tend to make myself little notes. I'm not gonna select anything again, but I'm going, to, by the way, you could select columns. You could s select a subset of columns in a worksheet and only make a browser plot from those. But in this case, we'll go ahead and again, like we did before, just select the whole worksheet. I'll go to plot, browser, and choose histogram. And by default, this is chosen the first column. Before I do anything else, what I want to do is I want to customize the legend so it makes sense. I want to have the long name from the column and the comments. So let me take my legend here, sort of drag that, drag that into a visible position, make it a little bit bigger right click on it, choose legend, update legend. And now I can select the translation mode to, cu <coughs> to custom from the flyout list. And, and it, sometimes it's a little bit complicated. So just bear with me. I will choose the long name, space, comments. Some of those, you can see some of these codes get a little bit complex. But luckily we chose two simple ones. And I will say, okay. So now I see that, that what we're looking at, gas mileage and the build for the vehicle. And I can begin to, to do comparisons. For example, gas mileage. I can, I'm holding down my shift key on my keyboard. Gas mileage, gas mileage, gas mileage, gas mileage, gas mileage. Or I can do engine, I can do engine displacement. And let's resize the histogram. Sometimes we do need to hit the rescale. I think we can come in actually and set the auto rescale to Y only. That way, when we're changing it, did it not get it? Hmm. 
Okay. Well, that it's supposed to rescale. There may we may have a little issue there. We'll have to iron out. But you get the idea of the histogram browser plot. It lets you compare trends that way as opposed to a line plot. All right, let's move on to a different subject. Let's look at our data connector improvements in Origin 2020B. Our data connectors have been in the product now for, for a couple versions. They were originally introduced in Origin 2019B. They were improved in 2020 and they've been further improved in 2020B. And the first one we're going to look at is, is Excel Data Connector. And let me, I have a file I've already imported here, but I'm going to import it again. You'll have, you'll have to bear with me that, that uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I know what the label rows are without opening the Excel file, maybe save us a little bit of time. Let me go ahead and minimize and hide that. Create a new workbook. I can hide my silly note. Create a new workbook. I'm going to come, by the way, if you're, if you're watching and you're an older Origin user, we did reorganize the menus in recent versions. We pull the importing functions out of the file menu and put them in their own data menu. Now our legacy, our older data importing routines are under the import from file. Our newer routines, our newer way with the data connector is under connect to file. We can even connect to a web source. In fact, I'm going to show you an example of that later my colleague put together and connect to a database and do a number of other connector based act, uh, activities. So we're going to connect to a file and I'm going to come down. You'll observe we have everything from CSV text to HDF. We can do H. HTML tables, MATLAB, JSON, NetCDF. We can connect to other origin files. In fact, you can have one large origin project and use it as a data repository. Then from smaller satellite projects, you could pull just the data you need from that one repository. That's what that origin file data connector does. By the way, we can get new data connectors. You can download them from our app center. We have a growing number of them. A lot of them, it'll give me just a minute. We have a fairly large number of them. Many of them are tied to third party. Third party files like the LaCroix connector or whatever the Catman connector is. A number of different third party file types. And that's, it's as simple as clicking on the download and install link to install a new connector. So let's go back and we're going to bring, we're going to connect to this Excel file. I'll go to connect to file, Excel. And I'm going to choose my file. It's an older XLS file that we've been using for a while in Origin Lab, but it's a good file for these purposes. So we'll take a minute. This is where one area, one of the connectors we've improved. We've improved the column label handling. And we have Excel sheet. We can choose which sheet. I'm just going to choose the first sheet. There's four in the book that we'll see. We don't have any main header lines, but I do know our long name is in the third row. Our units is in the fourth, and our comments are the first and second. Like I say, I'm not going to bother opening the file in Excel. When I click OK, Origin imports the data similar, similar to the to our browser graph. We now have a multi-panel window. On the right side is our worksheets or our worksheet area, and on the left side is a control panel, a navigator type panel. From this panel, we have options. First, we can close it. We're not going to do that. We can minimize it and hide it. Of course, here's access to our data connector. I won't get into that today because uh, we've reviewed that before and, and we also have videos online on dealing with data connectors. I really don't have time to go through today in detail everything about data connectors. The important point here being we have this navigator. I can look at, these are the different sheets in the Excel book. I can select a sheet and right click and add and connect it to the workbook. I can add and connect another one add and connect another one. I can come back and, and disconnect some. Let me select one and delete the connected sheet. 
delete the connected sheet. So that's one way we've improved Excel. And I think that's I think that's actually really nice. In fact, I think the Excel connector is is, is a very is very useful if you're dealing with Excel data because it's because it's connected to the Excel file. Then if the Excel files, you can update your data and origin very easily just to click just a click of a button or a, or a click of a menu choice. Let's look at the next one. We can support, we have improved our, our drag and drop support for data connectors. So I'm going to drag and drop some MATLAB files just to show you how the data connector will be used. Let me come to my data folder, MATLAB. Let me just choose one, two, three files. That's good enough. I will drag and drop them into origin. The MATLAB data connector will kick in. And let me come back to origin. And I can see we have a navigator for our MATLAB. By default, it's brought in all the data in the book into one sheet. Well, that's maybe not what you want, but we can also add the other data as sheets. We can add and connect the sheet. Then we can add and connect the sheet. We can separate it out. And then come in and just delete that first sheet. In fact, can we do it from here? We don't want to do it from, yeah, I guess we can do it from here. There we go. So that's dragging and dropping of a third party MATLAB files. Now let's look at another improvement in our data connectors. Pardon me. Let's look at, at I'm, I'm going to show you, oh, this, this is a pretty, nifty well this is a pretty nifty example that my colleague came up with we have what we call a connect to web it's it's a connector it's for pulling data off the internet and my colleague has taken some some uh, data from our current pandemic there's a website that posts daily data and he pulled the data using origin from the website he did some heavy duty number crunching that we're going to see in a minute and he created this browser plot. We can see the different graph. We can see the browser plot. So let's take a look at how he brought it in our data connector. It's over in this workbook and here's our connector. We can look and see at our data source. I'm not going to change this. I don't want to break anything, but we have a connect to web uh, dialog that lets you specify a URL. And here's a URL, the data. I'm simply going to import the data. Let me let me arrange things so that so that we can see what happens. I'm going to import the data. And when I do, Origin will bring the data in quickly, but we're going to have to go through some serious number crunching here. And like I cautioned earlier, I'm using a bit of an older, uh, not a not too powerful laptop here. So these calculations are going to take a little bit. Uh, you'll have to bear with me. I'm sorry for the delay, but it's well worth it when you see the results. We're, we're that the, look. It appears that the last time this data was updated was maybe a month ago. So we're going to pull in. We're going to see how our trends uh, change for this, this COVID-19 data in the last month. We're going to see how things changed. Just another few seconds. Here we go. All right. Let's look and see what, first let's rescale our axes. Okay, we can see the trends of these European countries and Russia. Let's add U.S. into the mix and we can see when the U.S. gets mixed in what, what the data looks like. So far the line is off the scale. Let's rescale it. We can look and see. I forget. I think this is the number of cases to date. I don't remember exactly which data this is. But you can see this This is a mixture of our, our new browser graph and using our connect to web data connector. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, and some number crunching in between. It's a, it's a very nice demonstration. Finally, let's look at a couple more things related to 
data connectors. I just want to show you this HDF5 connector. I've got an HDF5 with fractal images in the form of two-dimensional arrays. So let's, let's go ahead and make sure we have a worksheet active. I'm going to go to data, connect to file, HDF. And I'm going to choose my fractals H5 file. We get a data connector browser. This comes up with many, not all, but many of the data connectors, letting you pre-choose what data you want to import. And if I choose a certain level, maybe I want to import this sheet, Origin's looking at that data and it sees those two-dimensional arrays and it's going to say, do you really want that in a worksheet? Maybe a matrix is better. And I tend to encourage you to heed this warning because if, I'll tell you, if you brought in all these matrices, you'll, it'll take forever. But in a worksheet, it'll take just a few moments. So I'm going to say no. Cancel out of here. Activate, create and activate a matrix book and then do the import again. But after I select my file, I actually don't have to import anything. I can just come down and then click OK. And Origin will, will attach a, a navigator to, a to the blank matrix sheet. From here, I can drill down. I can look at attributes about my HDF uh, data set. I can drill down the tree. And now I'm going to import all these data sets into one matrix sheet. So I will just select a matrix sheet, right click, and choose Add and Connect Sheets. And we can see how quickly they're imported. They do come in as images. My slider is already configured. And we can see sliding through the fractals. Again, I've got a mini toolbar here. <coughs> Pardon me. I could show instead image selector instead of a slider. We turn off the slider. I could look at it with this mode. I could come in and look at it as a data if I wanted. <coughs> Pardon me. Finally, let's look one more data connector related improvement. This is a really neat improvement. I have, I don't know how many books here. Let's see. Let me delete that. I have three, I have 12 uh, workbooks here. And I can tell you right now, they are all, uh, they all use web connectors to connect to a specific website and pull in data based on a, a city. Now, it, it would be tedious to go through and have to update these all at one time. In fact, where is this graph that I want, we wanted to look at? Uh, here's the graph. Ultimately, we're going to update this graph, but I want to show you first how we're going to do this quickly. Like I say, we could do these all one at a time, or we have a new toolbar button added to our import toolbar. Import all connected data. By the way, we also have connect the web added to the toolbar and connect to multiple files. That's another feature improvement where you can go ahead, instead of connecting to one file at a time, you can connect to a whole group of files. I'm not going to cover that today. So let's go back to the import all connected data. When I click this, Origin is going to go through the project and for every single data connector, it's going to import the data. It imports the data in the order in which the imports were originally created. So we've gotten all those imports. And now I can look at the graph that this was based on. It will take just a moment to update. I've got this slow worksheet, like I said. Got to do some, some number crunching. All right, well, maybe we won't wait for it. We'll wait just another moment. I don't know what the delay is now. Let's go ahead and we're gonna wait another moment and see what Origin's doing.
Okay, well, it appears we have a problem. So let's go ahead and let's abort this and we can start again. It happens every webinar. Did we get it back? No, this happens. Oh, finally, all right, good, 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 good. There we go, so we got the update. These were all tied to the, to the, to these, these workbooks that were connected to the data. Finally, let's move out of the data connector area. And let's look at these HTML features I mentioned previously. And this this started a couple versions ago, but it's a really neat feature. So I wanna I wanna promote it again. We do support now in Origin making HTML based reports. I have a workbook here. I've done a peak fitting uh, analysis of the data. I've got my typical worksheets associated with peak fitting. The last worksheet contains an embedded notes window and in that notes window, I have an HTML report. These can now be made in origin. They're very, they can be made very attractive. It's a, it can be as complex and as beautiful or as simple as you want. In fact, we will do a webinar. I would say in June, we'll, we'll do a webinar where we specifically show you how to make these. It will go into depth showing you how to make these reports because they're much nicer than our older report mechanism. So this is one, it's, it's elegant, it's not super fancy, but it's pretty elegant. So that's, but that requires you to know some HTML. There's a similar syntax though called Markdown. It's, it can be, it, it, anyone can do the Markdown and similarly, we have a linear fit, but this time my Markdown report, it's just, it's very basic. It's got basic table, table styling, but it's still a custom report. Very simple syntax. At that webinar we're gonna do, we'll, we'll show you how to use the Markdown. Okay, one last, and this is actually, it is a new feature in 2020B. It is copying tables as HTML. I wanna take this table, this parameters table, and I wanna copy it as is into Word. So let me do, let me show you how we will do that. I'm gonna to come to one of the cells, happens to be the upper left cell, right click, and from the menu, choose copy table HTML. Now I'm gonna to come to Word and just hit Control V to paste it. And we can see that the table and his footnotes got pasted into Word and is editable. You can edit this. You can change fonts, backgrounds, you name it. It's just the table. This is actually an HTML table. Word accepts HTML. This is an HTML table brought into Word. So we have that. Let me just select it all and remove that. So I can show you the other thing we can do. We can take this whole report. We can transfer this whole report over to Word and have editable tables. I'll come to another one of the tables, right click and choose copy all open tables and come to Word and hit control V to paste. And now we have all, all, the, all the tables brought into Word. And these will come into PowerPoint too. They should they should come just fine. I think that they might come into other third party softwares that would support pasting HTML. Though we haven't tried it, I haven't tried it myself. I'd like to, but I haven't gotten that far. So that's those are our HTML offerings, and like I say, the reports are pretty nifty. Finally, let's step through some new graph types because we're running out of time. We have a bee swarm plot. That is, a, that is a statistics plot. Bland Altman is useful. It is an analysis plot. It's used for comparing the relationship between two variables. That's, a, that's been a heavily requested feature for a long time. I'm glad we can implement that. What was called a bullet chart. And a normalized bullet chart. We have a streamlined plot, directional arrows. In this case, this is a plot of electric fields. 
We have a negative log scale. We support negative log scales. Now, this has been popularly requested. We see it in, in many open source products. The desire for, even though some could argue about this, the desire for a negative log scale is there and we have fulfilled it. Polar charts we've improved. We have now a radial polar plot that's very attractive. It's more COVID-19 data. I think by this time, it's a little bit out of date. Well, in fact, I know it's out of date. We have stacked radial plots. It's another kind. Lastly, we have stacked radial bars. This is a very attractive graph. All right, finally, let's take a quick look just for a minute at the new apps in Origin 2020. And the best way we're gonna do that is to open the App Center Bear with me for a moment. All right. And we will choose for the minimum version. I'm going to scroll down and choose 2020B. And choose search. All right. All right. So let's look at some of these options. We have a uh, SWM classification. We actually have a customer in Europe that has released their own app and it's a very fine app. It's used for battery data testing and analysis. Battleese, that is a customer developed app. We have a correlation plot, x-ray diffraction analysis, standard curve analysis, a new way to do zoomed insets, it's improved. It's, it's, it's got lines that connect the inset to the main layer. Uh, radiation, antenna radiation patterns, many, many, many uh, data connectors, uh, linear mixed models, many new apps in 2020. Okay, I'm gonna wrap things up now. We're running out of time. We're reaching just about an hour. I wanna thank you for joining me today. I want to go ahead and re-emphasize our, our social networking options, whether it be Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, our blog, our user forum, our apps that I just mentioned. I'll re-emphasize we are going to send out an email here in a couple of days with a link to, to watch the, this webinar and to download the project. I think we'll be able to download this one. Also, at the time, you'll receive an email about filling out a brief survey. Please take the time to do that. It may mean a lot to us. We'd love to hear from our customers, and we take your feedback very seriously. And on that note, I'm going to sign off and have a nice weekend. Thank you.